No, uh, what do you call that? It's funny. This thing you do. Captain Yeah, but it's called something else in, in Canada land. Let me fix the angle. Anyway, that, that's the same thing I'm going to do with you guys. You guys got a little bit of vertigo going on. Uh, vertigo going on is because of our campus. Just a little. So, folks, tonight, thank you for joining us at our round table. We're trying to get started back again. Um, we have such a big district that we've got to learn to try doing it in person for those of you that want to come. And if you can't make it, you can watch it from home on your Zoom. So, like I said, this is going to be a big learning curve for a lot of us. We we'll appreciate your patience as you try to do um, we're going to go with our opening of the update here. Ever very common, he's going to help with us in the Pledge of Allegiance and our staff of the law. And hopefully, we have our Thank you. Scouts, Pension, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Scouts, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Into the public, which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join me in the scout, scout law, as well as the other scout sign. On my honor, I will choose my best to do my duty to God and my country to obey the scout law, tell of the people of all times, to keep myself physically strong. As an American, I will do my best to be clean in my outdoor measures, be careful with fire, be considerate of the outdoors. To be um, yeah, okay, so our next part, I keep on filling up with me. I know you guys can't see it. Um, eventually, at some point, we'll be showing it up on the screen so you guys can see what really a uh, good part is. Um, right now, I want to go with my topics for our council. Um, we want to go over what's going on the OA. Uh, get a little bit of information on training and um, upcoming events in the, in the council. So I'm going to introduce Danger again because he's going to come tell you about what's going on. All right. So as I said before, my name is Danger Eckleberry. I'm the current vice chief of administration for Moa Oaks Lodge, as well as the current lodge chief. Um, our numbers for our council lodge so far, we have. 318 currently dues paid members for the year, and 96 of those being married. Um, we've been trying to improve our communications over the last year, and I believe we've done a good job. We've sent out a letter, we've done several emails, and we've been trying to get things done soon. If you have not been receiving contact about lodge events and goings on, then it's probably because either your email is incorrect and be or setting to spam. And one of the ways to fix this would be to contact the local scout office, tell them, and then they can get it through to me or just send it straight to my email, which is vcadmin at mobilefocus.org. Um, I have calendars here for those who would like one for the OA. And also we on our website at mobilefocuslodge.org. You scroll to the bottom of the page, there's an option to see how Look forward to seeing as many of you as we can. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Um, leader training update. I think what I had on that was um, um, leader training update. One of them was the Cubs. The Cubs now are going to be having two nights of camping a weekend now, so I'm just having them one. You still have to have somebody that's blue trained. Um, so many years back, and somebody said to me, if you have somebody with two blue trainers with you, because if, it's, if you get a sick child and their parent is your blue, there goes your camp out. They have to take their child away, then you don't have to put them in blue training. You take two, 
then you have a backup. So it's kind of like a little advertiser, maybe it's a little bit trained computers. Um, that update will come into the guide to state scouting September 1st on the extra night. So you can look there to find out more information if you want it. Um, on the adult side for scouts, VSA, the change now is that you have to have two adult leaders over 21. No longer can you have like a 25 year old and a 19 year old. You've got to have two leaders on your overnight camp out that are 21. To everybody to try to get to. They just had an Iowa last, but they'll be having another one in a couple months. So um, any training you need actually for any of your uh, position now that we're getting ready to reach harder. Um, please reach out to our training department. We believe there's a training calendar and his contact on the Black Swamp area. Um, the last thing I have to do on adult leader training is merit badge counselors. And adult leaders, actually, there's been a change to, um, I believe, introduction to merit badges, and there's another course um, that they made changes to, and they're recommending that you look these two courses over to become familiar with what changes come to those classes. So um, if you want to take a look at that, then you should be able to find that too on your training. Um, well, that, uh, yes. Arrangements and training for adults? Well, yeah, we can say that now. Um, Branch Master, you want to do it? I, I can. He's going to come out and tell us about the Branch Master training. So, so this is late breaking news I got from our district executive um, today. Uh, we are going to have Branch Master training on October 21st from uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. That way, if you are interested in running a archery BB gun um, or learning how to work one of the ranges, you can come there and learn about that. Uh, that's great things. So we always need people to help run the council district events, uh, but also during recruitment, if you need, uh, if you'd like to run uh, one of the tents for a recruitment event uh, in a community or also at parades, uh, that, that would be a great thing available to you. So again, that is October 21st from eight to five at Camp Barry. Thank you. Back to Linda. Um, the last thing we're going to talk about, we did that. We did that. Oh, I think there's something already. Oh, I just, I took a picture. Okay, so this, yeah, just after this, and we'll go to the PowerPoint. Um, I wanted to talk about um, upcoming events we have coming up in the district. Um, the Haunted Woods of Camp Barry is coming up, and they're going to have a haunted. Um, they do the haunted woods in the evening, and then I, to be honest with you guys, I've got to print out my paper that has all that information. Luckily for all of you, all the information about these events is on the council website. Um, the haunted woods at Camp Barry, they're going to have some stations set up out here through the camp. They're going to do a um, par, uh, what do you call that thing? Trunk or treat. Trunk or treat from 515 to 645 out of the parking lot costs ten dollars. But I can't remember what exactly date that is. October 28th. Oh, look at that. Oh, October 28th. Um, yeah, October 28th and 711 is the haunted woods, and then 515 to 645 is the trunk or treat. Um, we have breakfast with Santa coming up on December 2nd and 3rd. I was told earlier that they decided now they're going to do this every year on the first weekend of December. So remember, the first Saturday and Sunday in December, you can come out here to Camp Barry and have breakfast with Santa. And then you get all you can eat breakfast and pictures with Santa and some fun activities. And that is from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. on both days. Well, I'll stuck here. I don't have quite yet, but um, I did want to bring up as a stem for badges that's happening on November 4th, and, and that is a university. Oh, Owens Community College. It was a word in the schools. So um, that, like I said, information on these events is, I know, on the council website because that's where I got a lot of information from. Um, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Uh, council coordinated meeting is November 17th, 16th, November 16th, and it's going to be on Zoom, and I know you can register for that on the council website. 
And I've got a late breaking event now. The Cavalry, Cavalry, and Halloween party. This weekend. Oh, this weekend. Okay, the Cavalry is from noon to four, and the Halloween party is from four thirty to nine. And they are here. They they are at the Little Conservation Farm um, over in Seneca County. It's going to be right in that. In twelve to four, we're going to have. Uh, the archery, we're going to have yeah. STEM activities, we're going to have crafts. Um, there's going to be food, so I know there's one which is going to be hot dogs. And then in the evening, they're going to have a haunted house on the trail. Um, they're going to have chili available for that. Um, should be a great time. And that's on the council website? Yeah, that is on the council website. So, see, folks, there's a lot of stuff on the council website. Find out about. I'm going to give this back to you right now. Okay, I'm going to try and slow down for a minute. I'm going to go to share my screen, which is where now. There. And okay, I'm going to screen to you. Now it's. Yeah, so everybody should see this now, right? Yes. Where do I see? Come on. Look here. Here, and that's hopefully now. Remember, it's on too, so make sure you get the mouse back over here. Um, you scroll down on me. Okay. Um, we're gonna have a safety minute, kind of a strange safety minute. Um, what I wanted to do is to introduce you all to the guide to safe scouting. Okay, this guide to safe scouting, we can get it, you can get it online. There's an in line, there's one online that it's always up to date. You can also you'll see one of the next slide. You can view the online version. You can also download the PDF. I'm going to talk to you guys because you guys should be looking at that slide right here. So. The online version is always going to be the most current up to date. And it's saying if you download the PDF, Make sure before you do something in mind, you've got questions about chat with the online guide to safe scouting to see if anything's changed. Um, if you go to the online guide, it will tell you what changes have come up recently. So, September, they already got the update on the Cub Scout coordinated camping section. So, we've already got that in there. Then the, before that, the last update is in February, and then there's one in June. So, um, if there's something you need to find, and it's October, and when they're gone, they did make a change in September. That doesn't affect me, so we're okay if you're on this guy's list. Um, another part of it, I'm going to show you, let me go down here. Um, it has a lot of good information here about the medical systems. But the one I wanted to go to was the activity planning and risk assessment. There you go. <laughs> I got my system going now. Um, this has the policies regarding all these features we have. If you're going to put, you know, a normal cooking camp out, or you're going to do one for, you know, five years or whatever, who knows if you're standing, but if you're going to try something that's a little different and you're not sure if it's really authorized or not, go to the guide to safe scouting and you can find out. They'll put that list of there the policy regarding any prohibited um, events. So um, you want to go in there for me. What? Just another clip. Okay, so if you go in there, like I said, it shows you where the prohibited activities are. There's also access to the age appropriate guide to sex scouting. Um, there are certain things that um, 14 year olds can do that 12 year olds can't do. There are things that weeblos can do that bears and, and wolves can't do. And so there's a guide there that tells you what age appropriate activities are. If you have any questions regarding your group or what you're going to do. Um, that I think is all I have for safety moment. So, oh, and I did point out that the guide safety guiding has a section for safety moments. So, if anybody ever asks you to do a safety moment, you can kind of go to the guide to safety scouting and get one so you can take it to your next event. Okay, now we're on a membership moment. Um, what I wanted to address in the membership moment right now is the recruitment, peer to peer recruitment cards. And what these are, are these are for your scouts who invite their friends to join scouting or at least come to a meeting. 
Um, this is they kind of, you know, they're a great tool for scouts to invite their friend, give them the information where you're meeting, what time you're meeting. Um, and so when their friends show up, they know somebody they know is going to be there. Um, these are the year for year cards. Um, and they give you some of the reasons, I mean, why it's so effective. I mean, the biggest thing is it's a friend inviting a friend. So when this young person comes to your scout meeting, your cub meeting, they know somebody there already. So they're kind of at least that held that comfort of, I know Susie's going to be there or Bobby's going to be there. Um, your friends also can make you feel wanted. There's nothing worse than walking into some place and you don't know anybody. And maybe nobody comes and says anything to you. At least if you walk into somewhere, somebody knows you, they come up to you, that always gives you a big feeling. So if your friends know that you're coming and they'll always make you feel part of it. It also gives the scouts the ability to feel part of the process because they're the one inviting their friends. They're the ones there to come help guide them through the process. Um, and in all reality, nobody can answer any questions about scouting better than the scouts. Um, we can deal with their parents, but when you got another scout that wants to know about scouting, what's going on, what you guys do, then these scouts, your true, your cops, can better explain to their friends what fun things they're doing better than you can. Um, I don't know if there's anything else to add on that. Anybody got any questions? We have a lot of pre-printed cards in the office. If you would like some to fill out, you can do that, or we can run mailing labels that fit perfectly on the back of the card. If you don't want to write hand write a bunch of pre-printed pre cards. Okay. And you can get those by contacting Rochelle. All right, so I'm trying not to go too fast, but um, this is our first time meeting in a while. Um, what I wanted to talk about tonight was recharter. We kind of figured that this month and next month, we I mean, would just kind of talk about recharter because I think that's high on everybody's list right now. Um, hopefully, after the first year, we'll delve more into breaking up into groups through the Zoom. What do you call this? Breakout break break groups. Um, and then we'll try to deal more with Cub and Scout stuff. But this right now affects everybody, regardless of what type of unit you are. Um, go to the next one. What we have here is these are the fees now for the next coming year. Uh, I had a couple questions about it. If you're going to be a Scout, the fee is $80 for the year. If you're a new scout that's never had any enrollment scouting before, there is the $25 joint fee. So any new brand new scouts is going to be $105. Because it's recharged when it's it's eight. The exploring it's actually $62. It's $50 for the annual fee, and there's a $12 council fee. So that's what that right now is for. All registered adults are $60. Scout master, cub master. Please, all that is $60. They are not subject to that $25 joint. They're brand new. And then the last one is the Merit Badge Counselors. Merit Badge Counselors is $25. Merit Badge Counselors, if they sign up as a Merit Badge Counselor at the $25, they are not adult leaders that can go on camp outs and that kind of stuff with your unit. The idea of them paying is to get that background check because they're going to be working with your youth and we want to make sure that everybody is safe. If you're already a registered adult leader, you do not have to pay $25 to become a merit badge counselor. You just apply to be a merit badge counselor. If you think you're going to be an adult leader and you want to be a merit badge counselor, go ahead and go with the adult leader. Um, we talked about the one time to waiting for me to get a charter fee of state $100 this year. You did not go up, I believe it was on the class year. So, um, and then Scout Life Magazine is $15 for a year. So that's the price that we have for this year coming up. Um, I have had a couple questions about next year's recharter. This year, I'd like to just get through this year. And then after the first year, we'll start looking at next year's recharter because there will be some significant changes next year. Um, the big stuff I read said there really isn't any changes this year. Um, I think the only difference might be for some people is that if you have somebody who signed up online, they're going to show up on your charter, but 
they're not going to have a fee next to their name because they've already paid. Like we have somebody who joined in September and they are paid through the next September. So we're not going to have to pay for them when we reach out at the end of this year with everybody else. So I'll let you go to the next. Okay, so how do you get to your recharger? Well, you get to it through scout mode, that scouting mode. Once you get into there, you go into internet advancement. Um, internet advancement, that's what we have here. This is the internet advancement screen. Um, so before we start your charter, the first thing you want to do, if you get a quick form in your DM, is make sure you're working on the right unit. I have three units I'm assigned to, so I have to make sure I've got the right one when I start messing around in there, okay? Um, if I want to be working with Truth 308G, I need to make sure that's up there and I'm not going to have to change it. It's just a drop down. Every unit you have access to should be available. You just select the one you want to do the restart and recharge on, and it should come up. Next thing you do is select the recharge. Everybody should have this access by now for your units. Now, that being said, that unit access is your key three, which is your charter or grab, your committee chair, and your adult leader. Not what I'm thinking of. Your, Talk about master scout. Yeah, your unit leader, scout master, scout master. I don't know who it is. And their designates. Each one of those positions has somebody they can designate. So that would be a list, I believe, is six people have access to actually do the charter. So once you hit the charter, it's going to come up. This tells me it's going to already set for 12 months. There's no, I don't know if we were ever able to change it before, but they have gotten out of any kind of pro rating. I think one year we could do it for 18 months or something, but. Right now, your recharge will be good for 12 months. We just tell it okay, confirm. All right, so you can go into your unit, make sure everything's correct on your unit, and you'll have your unit. You can stuff on the lot, and your charter work right on the right side of the screen. And at the bottom, you have your roster. The first thing I want to point out on this is um, Charlotte Kennedy, the first line, if you see that, she has red for YPT. Her YPT is expired. As far as I know, these do not go yellow if they're within the 90 days. So you might want to check too on all of your adults on what their YPT status is, because that was a problem we had last year was everybody was good when I started. But by the time I went to hit the submit button, a couple of people had expired. So you might want to check that before you go in and go too far. The only way you can fix Charlotte Kennedy is she's going to have to go in and take youth protection online. And that will clear that up. Okay. So we're going to start with adding new members. I believe right now the idea with scouting is moving to everybody signing up online. I don't know how long you're going to be able to do this, and I'm not even sure if this is good for this year. This came up on the database I had to play with. So I'm assuming it's still good. So you don't go on them. Okay. So if you want to add a new member, you're going to go to manage members. And you're going to add a new member. Um, okay. So once you click add new member, then you'll get a little screen to come up. You get two choices. You can do a new paper application, which is something that's brand new. Or an existing member, which could be somebody who are adding from another charter. Uh, hey, Jamie, can you repeat your question? Sorry, that was Kirsten, not me. So um, we have. Three units. I have a girl troop, boy troop, and a pack that I'm with. So sometimes we have people that cross over. I get a new adult that I signed up for the maybe the, the adult signed up for the boy troop, and now I'm going to recharter. I want to throw that adult member down with the girl troop. That would be like an existing member. I'm sure too. If I had somebody from another unit who wanted to be on my charter, that would probably be fine too. You just they're going to 
So you have to pick whichever one you want to do. Okay, so um, I'm just going to run through adding a number, which is kind of pretty much almost the same as adding a picking number that just looks like difference. When you add a new member, you got to give your first name, last name, uh, member type. That's usually adult, I believe, is what that one was. And then um, you've got to provide their email and then give them a position. The job now comes up with all your positions, you can pick what you want, but adult later on. Um, this one, though, because it's got the new allocation, you have the option to add a paper. Um, application, what that does is just takes you to someplace to upload that file from your computer and will attach it to the system. Um, yeah, go. Okay. So we get it one more time. Okay, so as you can see now, so you've got John Smith, he's an adult member. Here's his uh, email address. We made him a committee member. Um, I have to have his member ID. If they're new, they have to go online to take any protection beforehand, and that will give them a, a member ID number for you to import when you go to the Okay. Um, there's a data break, and then you see there's a file. It just says round table format. I just grabbed the file and, and an application to put up there. So, um, and this, what you may add to the and that person gets added to your roster list. Yeah. Remember, I missed it right here. Remember, I need to be found on your protection certificates. If you have an adult, you're trying to sign up and they've not been online to take your protection, you can't add them here. Okay. One more. Oh, I didn't know. I have another page on that. Sorry about that. Um, so that's how you add a new, either an existing or a new member. Next is updating number positions. So let's say now you've got an adult that was an assistant scoutmaster, your other scoutmaster now retired, so they're keeping that person up to the scoutmaster. Because you can do this here on the charter. Um, you'll go to the little pencil mark at the end of the line to edit that person. So click on the pencil and you get update number information. So Member um, type adult. I am assuming this is because if you have, a, there's a choice here. If you have a youth that has aged up, you can also now move them to the status here and keep them on your charter now as an adult. Um, and then you've got a position to pick for them. You got to give them a position. I think that's updated information and. Uh, so at the top, your position is going to be updated. The charter community is now the new member coordinator. Okay. So, multiple members. Multiple members means that you have somebody that's chartered against multiple groups. They're only going to want to pay to be in one. Okay. So, if you bring somebody in to your unit, like, okay, so let's say our, our, our boy tree. So we brought in this new adult, we signed them up on our boy tree, and they're going to pay through the boy tree. But we also want to add them to the girl tree. So we're going to make them a multiple member, and they're going to come up on the girl tree without any money to do because they're paying under the main one. So the multiple member is the one that doesn't pay. Whether you're, I said that understandably or not, you know what I mean? So if you mark somebody as a multiple member, the assumption is they've already got a unit they're paying. So I'm telling you about it, you see, we got, I forget which one I used, I think Daisy Beck. Yeah, so I chose Daisy Beck. Daisy Beck, that was $76. I forgot this feature. But anyway, so you go to manage member and you select mark as multiple. And then you hit that. Sure, anywhere there. There, it comes up now. I have a basic flag. I can pick the council, I pick the unit, and then where there's a unit type. So I'm going to go ahead and hit clear. And then as you see now, Daisy Beck's line has zero because the assumption is now to the multiple on um, this, and this is her second group that she signed up under. She's already paid through the first group, okay? Is that what the plus symbol means over here on the left by a name? Yes. 
So she's not using multiple. So she's paying someone else. Um, and if you want to add multiple, if for some reason you can't put her on the original one that she wanted to be on, and she's going to have to pay through this group. So if we bring it back, we're just going to go select the line. And you're going to have mark as multiple, and you're going to confirm. And as you see, that means he owes seventy-six dollars to this group. Okay. Um, I'm just going to the next. I think it's the the moving number. So let's say you have an adult that um, I think this is for the youth too. You have a youth that's aged out, or you have an adult that doesn't want to be part of the group anymore. You're going to remove them from your roster. So it's not quite the same thing as doing uh, multiple. You're going to check by the box, and you're going to go up under manage members, and you're going to remove from chart. So it's already selected another. And then when she did remove, she's gone, and now she'll be under removed members. And there's one there. Um, so if you want to un remove her from the roster. And then Heather's now in the remove members group. You're going to select that checkbox, and then you'll go up and hit add to reach other. Oh. And she should be back on the true roster now. She's not on the back. She is not in the remove member anymore. That's a, that's what that looks like. Okay. I missed that slide. I'm sorry. But it's pretty easy to move your people around like this. Just try to remember where they're at if you have multiple units. If you don't have multiple units, you really don't have to worry about it too much. Um, and so that's, that's my next one. Okay, so that's kind of how we deal with adding, moving people. Um, your list is there. If you want to give them, the, if they want Scout life, and it's just a little quick button that you slide it across. Um, so that I don't know if there's any really more to say. Does anybody have any questions on that part? You did a nice job. Okay, so. Um, all right, so let's go to the next thing. Um, let's go to review the roster. Can we right now? Yes. Okay, so. Um, You've got, I think you've got everybody set how you want them to be. Well, but now you've got Charlotte's got to do her YPT, Daisy's got to do her YPT, and then the kids got to do her YPT. So there's not much you can do with this at this point until they take their YPT. So your two options, you keep reminding them and wait till they take it, or you remove them from your roster and you can have them back later. Um, that's up to you. But right now, I think, to be honest with you, my question I have to ask Mandy is, if you add a person, I don't know what happens to that CBC column. Do you know what I mean? Because a new person is not going to have a CBC. And that's something I was not able to find out. So I don't know what having a red CBC stops you. I never read YPT well. So, um, if you want to go up to print roster, it's up in the top right hand corner and then you can go ahead and print it. Okay, so this is your roster that comes up and it basically tells you these are your adults. And we've got, you know, Heather Edwards was dropped, you know, Heather Edwards is a multiple. Um, which is dropped when I was doing stuff. Anyway. You've got your adults, and then if you go on down, it'll be your clip. It shows all your youth, it shows your youth by rate. At what point when you're adding the age of your new adult, are they assigned an ID number? They should have an ID number when they come in because they have to take YPT. If they don't, if it's a youth, they won't change their number. As soon as you bring it roster, do they have the number generated at that point? No, they have to take the YPT before you put them in there. If it's a student, we should be on the thing, register. That's a good so question. As far as the youth? Yeah, I imagine that you can go in and just take it, mm -hmm. but they have to take it before you submit the roster.
if it's a year, it's hard to register. That number won't change when you go to adult. So they can take that number and go because you take your protection, haven't you? Right. And he's but, I mean, he but if you have somebody that's come to you and like you're gonna sign them up and add them to your register, they, you just talk to them in this recruitment period, they have to still before you can even turn that charter into the scout office, they have to take YPT and have that YPT. Yeah. Uh, so you can take YPT and get a member number without being signed up. So I guess, I guess the question is how do you, how do they, how do we generate that number so they can take the test? When are they assigned the When they create the uh, line So they can take the <laughs> You can't become an official member of the BSA until you take YPT. So you're right. literally taking YPT before you can become a scout leader at this point. We'll have to get that in. That's, did you write that? No. Secretary. No, because what the system does is as soon as you get to your, your name and your uh, email address. That's why email is so vitally important now in the BSA system. Yeah. You can you can take any text without, without having a member of the that once you take it, submit everything, you'll get a memory. I think you create a MyDotScouting account, but you don't really go very far. You can just go and take the training. But until you take that with your application in and get added to a charter, then you get assigned to the unit. Do you know what I mean? You're going to be able to go to MyDotScouting, and pretty much all you're going to see is your training. You're not going to be able to see any units. But that's how you get numbers. Right. Yes. And why not scouting the will give you a number. Correct. Yeah, it won't give you an actual ESCID number until you actually submit an application and do your YPT. So once you do your YPT, submit your new panel application, you're registered in the ESA, and then you'll get a member ID number, which will bring yeah, that's what you guys do, right? Create the account and then. Or did you have your member from way back in the day? Uh, you can go back in the down and start the account. Right. So, back in the day, you can be done too. You can convert. No. Um, yeah, you, yeah, background check has to be the past background check. YPT has to be done before you can become an official member of TSA. Right, but I think you have to, the process is you go online, you take YPT, you take that YPT cert and you attach it to your application and your signed thing that do the background check. Yep. Then that gets either uploaded here and taken over or you take it over to Scout. So you've got that, you've got a number it will give you to take YPT. And that's the number that the system is looking for right now. I'm assuming it's going to become part of, I don't think that number changes once you join the roster. It's just not going to get you very far. If you just go in this make an account and do YPT and don't go anywhere, you're not going to get anywhere in the system. That number will probably just die after a couple of years and be in addition to somebody else. So you can make a, you can make a my.scouting account and take the YPT. And you have to do that before you can turn your application. The applications have to have that YPT sir. And then this is basically you can see where on your I only did two screenshots just to kind of show you what the bill looks like and what does it look like. I don't know what it looks like. So now this was moving on to validating and recharger. So if you think you're ready and you hit it. Validate the charter and pay. Well, this charter is not going to go with you. Um, and I wanted to show you basically, there's a button at the top. And you're either going to get yellow or you're going to get Warning, you may have received payment, but you don't have issues that they need to be resolved. Or red, you cannot receive payment until the issue is resolved. The reds are the white teams. Those will stop you every time. And this has right here, and you have letters in the red. Leaders do not have proof of YPT. This also has some youth who do not meet the age requirement. They've actually aged out, so they cannot be re signed up as youth. So that's why they've got the warning there. 
So um, I kind of went in and I deleted the gene that didn't have YPT and I deleted the gene that were not YPT because this was just something to play around with. Um, so if you want to hit the next one, um, this one, see, it's good. I still got the legend, but it has no error, so it's going to let me go on to the next step. Um, so I'm going to go over here and do this in a minute. And then this is the field that comes up. And I don't know, guys, if you remember your, your first page of your charts before that had all that full information here. How many pages you have? How many prepaid? Um, how many pages you for um, scout life? How many paid doubles? And all that stuff. Um, and this says, one, no fee and double, it should be the charter organization headed. Um, and then your options for payment. Uh, you can go to the next three. You can pay with a credit card. You can pay with an ACH or bank draft, or you can pay the council. You have that choice to make. I look at this thing for paying with the ACH, and there's a lot of hoop to go through. I need to figure that part out because it said something about hitting your bank every day for 30 days and then taking it all back or something. I'm not sure. Um, and it says here, if you're doing two units, they don't want you to post them on the same day. So if you have a boy troop and a girl troop, and then boys post the boy troop on Tuesday, and then you go on Wednesday and try to post the girl troop. Um, but this is just for that if you want them to take a direct bank draft out of your team. Okay. So we can go into that hopefully next, you know, next month we need that a little more if you have any issues with that. Um, yeah, I'm going to let's forget that one. There we go. <laughs> that next one was trying to get a little bit more of that ACH, and I just couldn't understand it. So um, let's see. that's one of the things we'll all have to delve into together. Um, now, they're going to this group called, uh, I forget what it's called. Anyway, once you get your charter approved, and uh, you've either paid with a credit card, or you've uh, finalized your ACH payment, or you told them you're going to pay in the council. This is going to be where it seems that now to your charter rep for signature. Charter order rep just has to go online and sign it. You have to go on them down, burn down, get them signed up before you take it in. So they can do it online, they'll get notice. And this is what we'll have here. This tells you when it's all done. So hopefully we've given you enough information to get you started. Um, I know there's some questions. I've got some questions too. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna have to get with Mandy. And hopefully we've got your questions here tonight. Uh, we'll them now and we'll try to get some information out. Not wait until next, still next month to get that out to you. But hopefully by next month, we'll have everybody on the way to move charters. Do you have any other questions? Okay. I was thinking about the technology. Can you do files on your website? Sure. Come on out. Let's put the camera on. He's gonna. So one last thing for the order here. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Let's see if you're there. Sweet. So one last thing in the order of the arrow for everyone is up and coming election season next year. Um, if you would like to help a volunteer to go out and do elections for other troops, then you will need to come to the Lodges LLD, which is, got counter pulled up right here, November 10th through the 12th, right here at Camp Ranch. And there you learn the training you need to do elections for other troops because you can't do any for your own. And another thing is next year, if you are unable to help host, well, not help host, but help do elections for other units, but your troop is still like one, we do have some options available. Now, for Hancock County, January 21st and 22nd at 800 South Main Street, for the doctor, yes. 800 South Main Street in Finley, Ohio. The doctor's in the back. It's in the back by the church. Is where Troop 308 will be hosting uh, election ceremonies. Um, 7, 7. 7 o'clock p.m. 
And in Seneca County, January 28th, posted by 499, mm -hmm. seven o'clock as well. So, so Either way, we will have options available for units in both counties, and we'll get that information available to you shortly. If you're interested in having email, if you are interested in coming to these, please email me. And if you need my email again, it is letter B, letter C, Adam at mawawokis.org. Thank you. We all have a large piece of summer camp. Yeah, we did have that problem this year at Dakota, and really, like, since we're done at summer camp, and that cannot be done again this year. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Okay, um, I was going to close with a DE minute, but our DE is right now um, in a little nervous because she's waiting to see the first song's going to make people see how the record is tonight. So she's not with us. So I'm going to, or Jim, the role I'm going to you want to share anything with the council or the district while we're here today? First one, thank you everybody for coming. I think this is probably our first district round table in three years, four years. But I want to applaud them for the presentation tonight, great information. Um, simply put, she put a lot of information out there about rounds or rechartering. Uh, we will have something on the website in the coming days waiting for the district commissioners to approve it. Once that happens, it's going to be on our website. You should also expect an email from the district commissioner, uh, Bob Christie, or maybe John Wheeler, uh, that will be sending out similar information to kind of give you some helps and tips and guidelines on how to process your charters. But uh, um, thanks again, everybody, for coming. Thanks for being online. And thanks so much for a great presentation tonight. I'm going to try to get the information back out to everybody. We can't do all we want to do without the knowledge to get it done. So hopefully we'll get these round tables going again so we can distribute the information like so. Our hope is that everybody comes back together, but we've also discussed how big our district is. And sometimes it's just not feasible to come all the way to Finley, go all the way to Tippin, go to Lemuri, I mean, we go to all kinds of places. Some of us don't mind, but some of us, you've got kids at home, you've got work keeps you late or something. So we're just glad that you joined us tonight. Um, so I want to see you. This recording.